I'm not a good person, but it just goes to show that good things do happen to bad people. So anyone out there who's up against the wall, fucking stick to it. Every cent you got, your rent, your electricity bill, if you're going to buy your missus a ring, don't fucking do it. Keep punting. Keep fucking punting. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the NBA Finals podcast preview. As always, you're joined by Sam and always joined by Nick. How are you, Nick? Samuel, how are you, my man? Good, mate. Good. Uh, bloody pump for this one. Um, yeah. You think you're excited like to feel these nibbles? <laughs> um, as, as always, we're down to two teams. Obviously, Miami Heat v Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, I can honestly say if I had a hundred guesses at this, I would never have had Miami Heat in my calculations. You? No, hundred percent. No, especially if they were the eighth seed to go up against the Bucks, who I still I don't know how they got past the Bucks. It was amazing. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So they are the biggest underdogs to have made it to the NBA Finals for you know twenty plus years. It's yeah. Incredible. Well, especially after losing the first play. Yeah, and then halfway through the second game to get the eighth seed. I think they were down by 13 points in the third quarter or something. So absolutely amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah. The turn of events and luck and injuries and Jimmy Butler being an absolute freak for most of the playoff series. It's um yeah, it's gone to where they are now. So I, yeah, I didn't think the Knicks would beat them in the second round. I was, you know, probably cautiously um, off pessimistic because I didn't want to get my hopes too high. Um, I didn't think they'd get past the Bucks, and I honestly didn't think they'd get past the Celtics either. So, um, but we're not the only people. If if anyone said they had them, I actually had them in a sweep. That's the only way I had them. So I had them in a in a little family and friends sweep. That's that's the only way I won money on them. So they've done hats off to them, even though I'm not wearing one. Yeah. Um, well, if you listen to our previous podcast, I was quite adamant that like the Bucks would shit the bed when it came close. Mm. Um, Phoenix Suns obviously made their big trades and missed. Uh, So they're in a hotter bother maybe moving forward if, you know, they haven't got a bench. So, yeah, it was, especially looking at the eight that we're in, like I was looking at going, I'm going to be bloody excited, but it sort of didn't live up to what it was going to be. Like There's a few good series in there, but um, like the Suns... As you said, the depth kill them. Um, mm. That re- that really hurt. And obviously, as soon as Chris Paul got injured, that they lost him. Though he hasn't been as strong as what he has in the past years, but, but that they just didn't have the depth. And that happens when you have two players that are on max contracts, and you uh, trade for one during the middle of the season. You, they traded out all their depth to get KD. Um, yeah, so it's going to happen. The Clippers were. I thought they would. You know, at the start of the season, I thought they were going to be the, one of the last teams standing, and they were out the first round as well. Um, injuries got them, didn't they? Yeah, well, uh, George didn't play any of the playoffs at all. And then um, Kawhi was out, he played the first two games and dominated and then missed the next one or two and then came back and just, yeah, was a shell of him out of his former self, as I say. Yeah, interesting that the uh, media shot off with Kawhi Leonard and, um, yeah, they got, got their pants pulled down when they yeah. eventually found out what the big issue was with him and... Um, yeah, I like saying that when they get their pants pulled down the media and have to apologise. Well, I can't recall what was the what was the actual issue. I think his sister going to jail. Oh, okay. for life. Oh, I could be wrong, but it's something to do with a family member. Yep. Okay. Um, but yeah, you've got better sources than me. I must have must have missed it. <laughs> Tom Tom Brown of the NBA. Um, <laughs> but Brown. yeah, yeah. But yeah, look. As I said, um, if you listen to our previous podcasts, I think you should have had a reasonable fill-ups along the way. Nick, you obviously predicted the rookie of the year at a, a small price, but it's yeah, a win. Yeah, so he was at three bucks, but I also yep. had him in a multi with um with Giannis and that became third in the MVP voting, which is not the end of the world. So it's pretty pretty good for a whole season when you've got so many variables in there. But yeah, Palo Banquero at $3. He just, just kept getting shorter within, within the first couple of weeks. He was into like twos and yeah, and I think he finished at like dollar twenty um halfway through the season and then was unbackable after that. So that was my that was my victory lap, but that was that's probably the only one. That's probably the only one I reckon um 
that I can hang my hat on. And you you might have had one. You mentioned this um, on text the other day. You had two. Give us the the least um, profitable one. Uh, so it was Lakers to make the play in at yeah, two dollars yeah. when they were out, and uh, I said if you got more balls than me, you can say make them for the playoffs, which was around four to six dollars mm. from memory. So that didn't play that, but played the two dollar play in. Uh, one and then uh, start of the year, I said Denver were massive overs to be NBA champions. Out of interest, what odds did you get um, for Denver? Thirty ones before a ball was tossed in the air. Shit, I thought uh, you said thirteens. I'm very yeah. impressed. So I didn't have a lot on. I'm not a big futures players. Uh, it's definitely not with better in their hundred to one <laughs> lotto. Yeah. So yeah. I'm dirty on that, but um, no, got them at 30, small little interest. So I'm just sitting back. Does it and... pay for a, a dinner out or does it pay for a weekend away with the family? What What's the um, return estimate? Yeah, yeah you can definitely go to Crown for a night over the weekend. That is good. That is good so, cooking. Yeah, it's going to be a fair bit of yelling in the work office for the next are four days. Are you, are you going to hedge at all? No, nah, nah, not at all. Um, no. Nah. Uh, you, you probably hear me during this podcast now how I feel this will go. Yeah. yeah. I, I listening to a few other podcasts of um, similar credibility to ours, it's going to be a bit of a um, We Love Denver episode, I think, but that's okay. Yeah, that's it. So we'll, we'll, there are things to look out for and value to be found, I, I still feel. Yeah, definitely. So we'll just run through the preview of the show, a preview of the game, series, uh, game one. Uh, I'll throw a same game multi out there. We'll look at MVPs. Obviously, there's someone very, very, very short, but I think there's value still in that. I'm and running he's quite tall too. Yes, he might have some psycho brothers too. Uh, and a series, how we think the series will end. So I'll throw into some quick, sharp questions that were from the community, Nick. Yep. Uh, threw it out, and we got some interesting questions here. So first one, Popovich, when do you expect him to retire? So slash sack I slash... He will not be sacked. He is a he will go out on his own terms. Yep. It'll be uh in 2042. <laughs> based, based on the following logic. So when they drafted Tim Duncan with their last <laughs> uh Duncan played 19 seasons and yep. puts um Popovich at 93 by the time he retires. So yep. That's that's my theory. So okay. 93, I don't think there's been many that have done it. So I'll take I'll dip my lid to him now. He's done done very well. So hopefully he gets five or six champ five championships. I think Duncan won in the end. Is that right? I think. Yeah. Um I think if he can get five out of um Wembenyama and he plays 19 seasons, I think um our Spurs friends will probably get Wemby tattoos. <laughs> he pulled back you. on. So he's going to die before he retires is basically your... Based on the average um, life expectancy of a male, yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not going to make it. He's, might be mid-game. So, no. Nah. So, yeah, 2042 and the ripe old age of 93. So Yep, nice. Uh, MJ, is he the GOAT? What do you, I'm going to deflect nicely. What do you think? Because I've got a couple of theories on... It's a fun debate, but mm. basketball isn't tennis. It isn't golf. It's... Mm -hmm. So that's that's my sitting on the fence answer, but there's a few other angles to it. What do you think, Samuel? It's going to be different because the generation, the younger generation these days aren't going to say MJ's a goat because they haven't seen him. Uh, yeah. Our generation to the older generation are definitely going to say he is the goat. Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, geez, he's hard to compare. Like, obviously, it's a two man um, race. Race. Yep, that's the word. LeBron v MJ. Uh, geez, LeBron's the leading scorer. That's hard to... Top 10 in assists, about to take over the most minutes yep. most likely next season, halfway through next season. How many... MJ won, what, six championships? Won six, yeah. Yep. That, and Le... the, big, the big debate is when people go, oh, Jordan's better than LeBron because he made six finals, he won six finals, um, six finals MVPs, LeBron's what won four championships and lost? I mean, he's lost four. Couple, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, so he lost the Heat. So he lost mm -hmm. the Heat. Lost the Spurs. Lost, uh, lost the Spurs twice. Yep. Golden State 
twice so four um yeah five two. yeah so it's i don't know it's a team game he's all round i think jordan was probably a more impactful defender and competitor than what, what yep. lebron was or yep. um but lebron's all round games fucking special like his passing is is better than his shooting and he's the league leader in all-time scoring and again his durability compared to jordan jordan obviously had a, a year and a half off in between um the three peaks so I, it's a there's that many dot points and comparisons and and ideas but again i, I love like most people you love watching both of them um I, I still love watching lebron now even like the game against denver the last one in game four get a 40 point near triple double and he's 38 years old, he you know could have graduated Brentwood in 2002 um, if he went down that path. So I don't know it's he's a freak, and the way he looks after his body um, yeah, is is incredible. And yeah, I honestly don't. Know. I, I, I still don't, it's a it's a fun conversation, but I've got I'm, I've got nothing. I'm, yeah, I think the fact I how I'm looking at it now, a few things you've pointed out is MJ didn't play with a lot of superstars. He played with a lot of B to C grade players, but made them look good. Mm. Where LeBron has put himself around some big, big players like yeah. Dwayne Wade, Bosch, Ray Allen. Yeah. Uh, the league was different then because a lot of there wasn't as many, um, like when Jordan was around, there wasn't as many players swapping teams and being traded and looking and for championships. Signings. Yeah, there wasn't much of that. So it's kind of like you're kind of like a real homegrown. Uh, team back then and he did like he had Scotty Pippen's a you know top 75 player all the time he was pretty handy yeah um, yeah, yeah true coach Horace Grant um, Rodman Luke Longley Steve Kerr like he's had he had some good players Bill Carter yeah. um, not you know, real, not real to the Boshes, not to the Irvings no uh, AD sort of style so he's I think MJ's had to be more consistent and be better yeah. and stand up most games where LeBron could have that off game and someone else is there to take the package. Yeah, um, I think you're always going to have a partner in crime. And that's most, like, you look at the the teams that are left or most of the teams in the playoffs, they've yeah. got at least two good players. If one's having an off night, the, the other one's got to pick up the slack. Um, Denver have got two of the best. Mm. Mm. Going around yeah. at the moment. Um, but I'll just say MJ because he likes to have a punt. So yeah, I he, reckon he's the goat. And I don't think LeBron would have had a punt in his life. Who do you reckon? Yeah, I guarantee, I guarantee you. Who do you reckon be more, yeah, more fun? It'd be more fun hanging around. You'd have a cigar hanging out. You'd be playing golf with him. Yeah, poker afterwards. Yep, and you'd be in debt afterwards. Hundred percent. Yeah, but he, oh yeah, you'd have a good time with uh, MJ. Um, question three. Obviously, we're going to move forward to August, September for the World Cup. The Boomers mm -hmm. thoughts. Where do they finish? I don't think we medal this time. Um, for a couple of reasons, I think we'll have a lot more, um, a little bit of a different team by the looks of it. It's hard to predict now because the squad's like 20 people big. And obviously, there's going to be injuries and contracts and there's a few NBA players that are out of contract that may not risk um, playing because that's their livelihood and that's that's fair enough. Um, I reckon we miss out. Our pool that we're in is is incredibly challenging. So it's Germany, Finland and Japan and they're all they're all actually pretty good basketball, basketball nations. So... We'll get out. We'll get out of the pool. I'm very confident of that. But I just think we'll probably miss out on a medal this time around, which I'm. It might be a good thing because then it gives us a bit more fire in the guts to go into the Olympics and and hopefully repeat or progress from where we were last time, which was one of the best moments in Australian basketball ever. Was winning that bronze. So, what are your thoughts, Samuel? Uh, yeah, no, nah, I've got to dive a bit deeper. Obviously, look at. What team USA put out there? Does Donkey play? Does yeah, all the NBA big boys play this? Yeah, or do they sideswipe it? But yeah, oh, hopefully they're competitive and um, yeah, hopefully get a medal and we get Ben Simmons back for the um Olympics. All right, do I have a wager on that? I do not think he'll play. <laughs> I don't think he plays either. I've put my redundant testicles on that. It's um yeah, he doesn't play um. I think the American team will still win. They'll still be the strongest team there, but they won't have any superstars in it. No. You might be lucky. You'll be similar to the last World Cup team. Remember the the games are at Eddie Had and stuff like that. Or yeah. at Marvel? Um, it'll be the likes of you know Donovan Mitchell. It'll be those guys that are like just right on the top fifteen, maybe just out of the top fifteen players in the NBA. 
you might get one or two of them in and the rest will be um, good, good players, but not quite at that, you know, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker level now. Yes, correct. Because, yeah, it's the World Cup. Uh, last one to spring this on you. Oh, go for it. LeBron James, does he retire this year? No. No. I think he just had the sads up after losing um, and a little bit of attention-seeking, maybe, I think. No, I don't think he retires. I, I think st- I think he's uber, like we talked about Jordan's competitiveness earlier, he's competitive in the broader sense. Like he wants to have the most minutes played in the NBA he wants to win another championship. Whether he's with the Lakers, I don't know. Um, there's been some interesting things happening in, in front offices, um, even at Golden State, as of today, like Bob Myers is gone. Um, mm. I can't see him leaving the Lakers, but and I, honestly, I'd be shocked if he if he didn't come back and play next season. I'd be absolutely shocked. I think it was a ploy to um, get the front office to make more moves, to yep. keep him there. And obviously, Trey Young's name's thrown up there early. Uh, I don't see them trading him. I don't see him retiring. I see him wanting to play with his son. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I just don't see that happening. I think it's just a ploy to, um, yeah, not do it. Yep. And the Lakers, to be honest, they, you know, we spoke about the playing tournament, the playoffs. They absolutely exceeded expectations from where they were just after the trade deadline. They, um, yeah, to make it to the Western Conference Finals on a pretty much brand new uh, rebuilt team on the fly. Yeah. Um, keeping a few core players like Reeves and um, obviously Davis and, and James. But for the most part, that supporting cast got totally changed apart from Lonnie Walker and, and Austin Reeves. So, yeah. Um, probably forgetting someone obvious too. But um, yeah, it's incredible. So they've proven that they could get the cake mix right on the fly. Um, and again, like how you start the season is definitely not how you look at the end of the season from a um, roster point of view. So, um, but again, some of the CBA changes makes that flexibility on the fly next um, season a little bit more challenging as well. So the internal growth is critical. So mm. having a strong uh, D league or G league uh, team and drafting well is uber critical now. Mm. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Be interesting to see what happens in the off season with the trades, and especially on draft night. So, stay tuned. Um, all right, we'll move into the preview here. Denver Nuggets played fifteen games this playoffs. Obviously, round one defeated Timberwolves four one. Conference final defeated their Suns four two. Beat the Lakers with their broom in four zip. Uh, what did you take out of Denver in the playoffs, Nick? Most impressive, obviously. They're the um, most cohesive team to watch play out of um, all the playoff teams, obviously. Um, it all goes through Jokic. It's, if he gets injured or anything happens to him, um, that is where the series will change. So, obviously, you don't wish for injuries or anything like that, but there's he's a big dude. Mm. Um, he's playing a lot of big minutes, like his minutes have gone up, I think maybe 10 minutes a game. Um, so too is his output as well. His output's incredible. Um, his PER per 36 minute um, statistics are through the roof. Um, what I see from them, their chemistry and their ability to move in their, you know, the Caldwell Popes and Bruce Browns uh, into the seven man lineup or the eight man lineup into playoffs is being, it's getting tighter and tighter as, as these series have gone on. But they've integrated so well in conjunction with Gordon and, um, you know, Michael Porter Jr. as well and Uncle Jeff Green. So I'm excited to watch them play. I think the the run in, I, I, I personally didn't think the Suns, um, I thought the Suns would get past them. So mm. that just shows that it's, yeah, so many things can happen. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on the, on the Nuggets? Yeah, uh, well, we knew the Timberwolves, they were going to clean up pretty easy because of their uh, noise that they were making in locker rooms and all that sort of stuff. So that was easy. The Suns, yeah, it, I don't know if it shocked me. Maybe 4-3 would have been more the better line. Yep. The Suns, obviously, with the injuries, as you mentioned, sweeping us. 
is some sort of a shock. I thought we could pinch one or two at our all best. The, all those games were tight, though, as well. Yeah, yeah. And like, wasn't really they were tight. games that we sh- uh, Lakers shit the bed when the yeah. pressure got on. And I was just sitting there at work going, we've shit the bed. We've shit the bed. Here they come. And, yeah, that's, that's why that was that's so a, good. That's the flip side of when you put a team together in the middle of the season. You don't have those battles that you've been through where it's tight, um, you know, positionally, defensively, all that type of stuff, where you, where you stand, how you set up. Um, and you just haven't had – you know, essentially haven't got those reps. So that's that's the difference. Sometimes you can cover those mistakes up with talent like LeBron and AD, and sometimes you – like – I think it was game three or game four. Denver just went to the same pick and roll on the right side of the court. I think it was four times in a row. And just there was no play calls. It was just legitimately get the ball to Jokic and Murray, um, space the the corners out and let them go to work. And they just absolutely just surgically just drilled it through. So and that's that's experience with we playing with, with two guys for you know how long they've played together now, six yep. six or seven years. Uh, Miami Heat, 20 games, so five extra games. Obviously, the play-in, they yep. lost to Atlanta Hawks. Then the play-in, second time round, they defeated the uh, Chicago Bulls. Mm-hmm. Round one, defeated the Bucks 4-1, as we said, shocked. Conference semis, defeated the Knicks 4-2. Then yep. conference finals, just finishing Celtics 4-3. What did you take out of Miami Heat and their playoffs? Yeah, come back to all... <laughs> Starting with the Boston series, that was incredible. To to be able to win the first three games, two of them away from home, then to drop three, and they were quite substantial victories for the most part by that game six one. Like Boston blew them out in games uh, four and five, and then they blew them out in game seven. Um, the Knicks one that obviously hurt, but they they just tore the Knicks apart. Jimmy Butler was at another level. Um, I think he was clearly the best player for the Heat in the playoffs, but they, you know, a few people thought Caleb Martin um, was up there in voting. But I think if you looked at it, the Larry Bird Trophy, which is the Eastern Conference playoff player of the um, the East, I guess, mm. um, you hope. He, Butler just got him the whole way through. Like he was the first couple of games, even especially going up against the Knicks, like he just absolutely just big brothered everyone. He was just stronger, quicker, wanted the ball more, wanted the contest more, wouldn't, you know, just wouldn't accept um, defeat because they're not the most, you look at the talent um, in that team and the depth. Like they've got so many, like everyone will speak about it if you guys are watching the game, the undrafted players, the um, players that, you know, even Duncan Robinson, he, you know, he was undrafted from from memory, then signed a massive contract, and he hardly played for the back half of the regular season because he, he was out of the rotation. And they have so many injuries. Old Depot went down, Hero's gone down, um, so they lose some of the depth. And Gabe Vincent went down. They're st- now starting guard. Um, so they they just are incredibly resilient, really well coached, um, well drilled. It's going to be yeah, they're yeah they well exceeded expectations within within round one to beat the Bucks the way they did, even with Giannis missing a couple of games. Um being very, very impressive. So they should be not the job's not done, as I say, but they should be very proud with uh, to get to where they are now. Even if they lost, like I probably would have preferred to see Boston Denver because I would have thought that would have been more competitive, but um they are uber competitive, the old Miami Heat. So be a fun series to watch, mate. Yeah, the main thing I took out of Miami and their well, the whole series was Game Six against Celtics. It was the end of the third, and Jimmy Butler was going like a busted. Yeah, it's playing and I I put it out in their thread and said he's cooked. They're done. Yeah. Yeah. Celtics win in seven. I went the early crow with three seconds to go, um, but in that last quarter he showed how good he can be with the ball and yep. just bringing players in. Like Duncan Robinson was just massive in that game, hmm. just shooting threes. And I'm like, they can't win. They they cannot get close to him. And then with and 30 he had seconds. Two, he had two really good opportunities, Duncan Robinson, in the, yes. the, in the game six to, to ice, not ice it, but really make it. it. Yeah. And he's he missed him. Looked and like was, on fifth spot. Um, and yeah, well, you look at Bam, he was going horrible too, but he couldn't do anything. Yeah, Jimmy just said, "No, I'm just going to keep passing the ball." It was just basic basketball for the young fans out there watching. Mm-hmm. If you can't, if you're not scoring, do something else to be involved. And yeah. bloody hell, I was impressed. And I think that's what got them in Game Seven because they 
Jimmy just had that momentum and he's got the uh, attitude of, I know I can do it. I didn't get to watch. I was busy. Unfortunately, couldn't have the uh, the mobile phone out at work yesterday. I had a few um, pretty decent meetings. Um, but I watched the highlights. Jimmy Butler looked like he, like in the other games, like the, they'd lost. It looked like he had no lift in his legs and his pump fake. I watched a few of them. He would get in and do his pump fake. And and they once you play against someone for, you know, that period of time, you know, you know, understanding their tendencies. And they weren't Boston weren't going for the pump fakes anymore. They were staying staying down, waiting for him to really go up. Whereas in the highlights I saw of yesterday's game, it looked like he was, he was going up first time every time and elevating like ridiculous amounts. So I'm not sure what that means for when they play game one because I think they're going to be a little bit knackered. I'd have to even what's it going to be three days a three day gap or break between between the games. He's going to have to still be put. I'd say, but he's a Uber athlete, he's like you and I, mate. Cut from the same cloth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, run marathons for fun. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, he was playing 40-odd plus minutes every game. There was no break. And that last quarter of game six played the whole of every minute Yep. Okay. Uh, of that last quarter. Obviously, he would have got a bit of a rest in game seven. Hmm. But yeah, I 100% with you, uh, which good lead way, mate. I'll give you credit there. Obviously, we're going to talk about the strengths of the Denver Nuggets here. Yep. Obviously, I just think they're a good strong starting five who all play a role. Yep. They play a touch tall with uh, Gordon about a 6'10 and uh, Porter Jr. about a 6'8. No, he's 6'10 be... as well. Yeah. 6'10, there you go. The other way around. Um, I think Porter 6'10 and Gordon. Either way, they're, that's a big front court. Yep. But they can play small. Yep. Um, I saw that against Lakers. Porter Jr. can play a lockdown role. Uh yeah, so I just think they have a good all-round side with a little bit of bench that they can go to if you know one of them gets in foul trouble. Yep. There, anything to add with their strengths, Nick? I think their their depth is their biggest strength. So their starting five is very strong. Yep. But then you start throwing, um, as I mentioned before, um, Bruce Jack Brown, White. Uh, Jack White. Sadly, he'll get he'll get a ring Jack White. <laughs> Um, if they if they get up, but he won't want up. Is he over there? Or yeah, I think so. Because he's not on the playoff roster from what I've heard. Yeah, he's the Andrew Goes of San Antonio Spurs. Just right. suit, wears a suit. If Australia, if that's how we Australians get our championships, we we no one asks how you got him. If he's dirty, <laughs> it's time he can say he's Nikola Jokic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so and Kankar as well. Uh Reggie Jackson, the former Clippers there. Yep. Um they've got some, yeah, got some. Good experience in there, um, yeah. I'm, I'm optimistic with their depth, and I think they can handle a potential in like a short term injury a lot better than what Miami could or can, which has been shown now because they're they're just nil, not depleted. I mean, we'll probably touch on that shortly about um, Tyler Hero, but um, I'm incredibly optimistic with Denver's depth. Their the top line talent is awesome, and their their seven or eight man rotation is as good as any you'll you'll see. Yeah, that leaves us another good leeway into the weakness. Now, you say there's depth. Now, if, say, Joe Kick gets into some um, foul trouble, yep. obviously we've got Thomas Bryant and DeAndre Jordan sitting there. I haven't played a lot of minutes during this series. Oh, no. who would you go to first, Coach? Who are you putting in first? I'm putting Thomas Bryant in. I think yep. he has more CUNT in him. Yeah, and a and, bit more utility as well to go yeah. up against um, Bam and, and Zella. Yeah, and he was good for the Lakers before he said, I want to get traded for more minutes, and he hasn't played yeah. a single minute. No. So that's weak. But, yeah, I just think if, if there's a weakness, it's going after Jokey Gurley and making sure he's in foul trouble. Yeah. Um, it obviously puts a bit of pressure on Jamal Murray to step up. but Because the other thing that I might do, you might find Denver will do there, they might go small as well. If Jokic does get in foul trouble... Um, we we mentioned Porter and, and Gordon's height. Um, Corbell Popes is a great rebounder as well for a guard. Um, Murray is quite tall as well. I think he's like six six or oh, something. Yep. Um, he's quite quite a tall dude uh, as well. So I think they and Miami aren't uber huge. Like you take Bam, loves a great rebounder, but I'm not sure how many minutes Love will see. There's one of the podcasts I listened to today. They thought he might he might start against um, <laughs> against Denver which would be incredibly interesting because he's not known for being a, a lockdown defender, but they reckon he might go Jokic just because of the, the bulk. But that's a fucking huge ask. 
Did he start game seven, Kevin Love? Let me check the video tape, mate. I reckon he did. With grey hair. Yeah, um, unless, unless he got to go, Gray. No, he didn't. Caleb Martin started. Oh, okay. That's See, what they, their front lines. Bam, who's I think particularly undersized for a centre. What's he listed at? Six nine. So he's a very small centre. Yep. Um, and then Caleb Martin, Jimmy Butler, both. Um, you know, their wings, they're slight, not slight wings, but they're they're wing players like Martin's six five. So they're pretty pretty small. So you throw love love six ten from memory. Yep. Yeah. Love, love didn't play a minute in game seven. Okay. Yeah, love six eight. Sorry. Obviously, what? Miami Heat, their strengths. We know Jimmy Buckets. It's the obvious one. Is there any other strengths to them? Because if they get into a shootout, are they? What are their strengths? Their competitiveness is their strength. Yep. So, um, like Matt, Matt Stru, Max Struess, Caleb yep. Martin, Gabe Vincent are all the the guys that they'll talk about a heap in the next couple or next two weeks when it's on, but. They are all dogs. Kyle Lowry is one of the biggest uh, CUNTs going around in a good way. Um, yeah, he's, okay. I'll mention him later on in my multi. He is one to keep an eye on during the finals because he will not give an inch at all and he will scrap. Um, he's, yeah. got a, he's got to step up if there yeah, are a chance. I think, he's, I think he's still a little bit – like he's – again, I might have to check the age, but he's, he's a mature age guy as well. But um, – He's been very good for their second unit. So, bit of leadership, bit of poise. He's been there before. He's won a championship before. He's um, yeah. It's just interesting. I just think that their depth really concerns me. Like Zella at backup can give you a couple of minutes, but they don't really have much after that. I think it's um, Hines Smith. I think it was Hines Smith that, that his name that came in. Yeah, Hugh Hines Smith or Haywood Hines Smith. He came in and and did, gave some good minutes against the, in the Boston series every now and then. Um, he's not going to not going to wow you against Denver, I don't think. So that that's my biggest concern for them is their if that was a question because I've rambled a bit, but I think their their depth is is scary, as in the opposite way. I think they're really thin. Okay. Um, their weakness. Oh, I, I'm a big stats man when I like to dive in, and um, interesting here that. The only stats that Miami sit top 10 for the league in is three throw percentage, their second, which is good. I think it's a good stat because if they do go to the line, they're going to be trustworthy to go two from two or one from one. Yep. But six in steals, obviously that's revolve around Jimmy Butler, I think averaging two a game. So that's okay too. But ninth in turnovers, that's mm. not good. And no. then third in personal fouls. So... Yeah, for a team that's in the finals, I would expect a better stats from them sitting mm. inside top tens. Yep. Um, I can't think of it off the top of my head what Denver are sitting. They're, they've got a couple. But for me, who have they got? Like, I know they've got players, and you've mentioned them, but they're not your good A-grade players. You've got Bam, yes. He's a bit inconsistent. Mm. Jimmy Buckets, well, he's going to have to play a series of a lifetime to get him over the line. But then you just, Kyle Larry, as I said, needs to step up. But then I just don't know after that. Yeah. They're just no names from someone looking out in. Yeah. Yeah. They're not um they're not your traditional, you know. Your Steve Kerr's, your coup coach. I know I'm comparing them to a massive side here, but hmm. they were good B plus A minus players. Man. Duncan Robinson, like, geez. Yeah, big contract, but hadn't, as I said, he was out of the rotation at the back end of the regular season. Yeah. Um, obviously, they... Hero, Hero's being out to their third best player, and he hasn't, he's potentially may come back. We might touch on this later on, but he'll come back potentially around game three or is yep. available around game three. He gives them something that they're really missing, but Caleb Martin's been that for them and probably more than what you'd expect out of Tyler Hero. Yep. Um, but I think the series will be potentially over by the time. He come, he's available, sadly. Don't push fast forward. We've still got some gems. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm with you. So interesting with that. Uh, interesting stat I've just found, Nick. The last six times that these teams have met, 
What would you think? Yeah, I, the... No, I know the answer. Oh. So I don't want to act like I'm really smart. So yeah, six and six and zip. Yeah, six and zip. The last yeah. time they beat Denver was August first, twenty twenty. Wow. Now that is a mental challenge to get over, and that is something Denver will be just hopefully using as bait while yeah. out there. Um, yeah. but geez, how do you get past that? That's yeah. That's that's a. Yeah, pretty comprehensive, isn't it? But that's a hard thing, though, because they're obviously East and West Coast teams don't play each other that often during the season, so they've only played each other twice during this season. Um, I think the season before is when um, Jokic cleaned up uh, Morris as well. Yep. Did you ever see that one? So a bit of fire in it. As you mentioned before, the the Jokic brothers that are like you sitting on my shoulders as big as us put together, they're bloke. Um, yeah, some big, big tickets. But, yeah, so hopefully there's a little bit of fire in the series because um, it's funny with the Boston series, like, because they this is the third time they played each other in the last four seasons, I think, and there's a lot of mutual respect. Like, the, I think the guys, some of the, like, Butler and Brown are, are mates outside of the outside of the NBA. Yes. Um, so when they bowl each other over or do a hard foul, like, there was no standing over each other. There was no, like, it was all, like, I'll help you up type thing, whereas in the finals, or normally in playoffs you don't see that, but in the finals you definitely won't see that. You'll have guys stepping over each other. Mm. What kind of the way you, you want to see, you want to like, don't give an inch. Cause that, you know, this is what it's all about. You're playing for all the marbles. Come on. Well, so, it's a bit like back in the, um, what was it during COVID when they played at Disneyland. Yep. Um, and uh, Ari- Gordon went off his head at Miami. Aaron Gordon Remember? did. Yep. Yep. No. When he was playing for Orlando, lost his shit. Okay. And so hopefully we see a bit of that because yeah, it was um it was good to see. Obviously it was won. three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. But um yeah, just a little thing I saw. You know why? The- because Orlando and Miami play against each other six, seven times six or seven times a year if you include the preseason. So it builds up that piss off idiot mm. in the things that you normally get around game three or game four, but hopefully it comes a bit earlier. This adds a little layer to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so, well, I'll just go over the last two games that they played each other this year or this season. Uh, game one, Denver 124 over Miami, 119 at Denver. The notes I've got here, Tyler Hero had 26 points. Obviously, will not play for a majority of this series. So, you can take a bit of that out. That out and he top scored. Uh, mm-hmm. Denver shot at 59.2% from the field and 607 from the three. That is huge numbers out of that game. Denver came from behind from the start of the fourth quarter to really just win. Game two, Denver 112 over Miami 108 at Miami. And Miami had a chance with seconds to go to square it up. So interesting, but big thing here. Jamal Murray didn't play and Miami shot from the field and three were poor, 43% and 34.3%. And in from those games from Miami Heat have added Kevin Love. So it's going to be, it might be tight, but that's quite alarming out of the first two games. Yep. I think, as we said before, Kevin Love didn't play game seven, but he still still will make a difference. He'll still play eight to 10 minutes a game at a minimum, uh, depending on foul trouble. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, obviously, if Murray not playing that that second game, that's yeah, that's the second best player. Arguably, you know, I think. Would you say he was the best player against the Lakers, or would you still say Jokic was the best player? No, uh, definitely Murray. I think he turned it on more. Yeah. Jokic just played his role. He wasn't. Or he wasn't like outstanding MVP sort of games. It was just twenty five. 12 and 25, 25 and 15. Just yeah. To... But he, he didn't look to damage us against us. That was the thing. I never was worried when he had the ball. When Murray had the ball, it was like, what's he going to well, do? There's a, run, there's a run there with Murray. I think it was the end of the game two where he had like 30 points in the last quarter or something. And he had 30 points in the next half of game three. Yeah. He just did not look like missing. He was just, yeah. And then I think he, he went ice cold in the second half. But again, they were able to get the win um, and set them up for where they are now. Yeah, definitely. Um, some other stats that I do like to use when having a little a flutter 
Uh, points per game. My, Denver at 108.7, Miami 103.7. So that's about a five plus differential. Interesting here when Miami Heat play away, they only score 99.8 on average, hmm. where Denver score 107.7. So that's almost eight points differential. Um, that's quite scary. Yep. So Miami yeah. are the first of all the game ones this whole entire playoffs. They've won every game one. Okay. Away, obviously, because of the eighth seed. So, yes. um, yeah, that's a, an interesting stat I heard heard this morning. You can almost look at it angles and look at Denver plus 11 or something like that in game one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when, yeah, Miami play at home 108 to Denver away 109. So, not much difference, so you can probably play your little cards of uh, under five points either side if yep. when playing at Miami. But, yeah, just some little stats. Um, obviously, when Miami play away, they only win at 31% this season. That's quite bad. It's about uh, 31 out of 100 from memory. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they're just some stats that I like to use when having a little flutter, but yeah, there's some alarming stats that we've um brought to the table that you can probably take advantage of. Injuries, we've touched on it a few times here. Tyler Hero, you don't think will play? No, I, I from all reports, he's available well, should be available from game three. Yep. Um I don't know whether you you, you risk the it depends on the situation, but I don't think you'd risk the chemistry that's got you to where you are now. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of that is continuity of minutes for Struis and Martin and Larry and, and Vincent. So I don't think um, it's something pretty drastic would have had to have happened, like foul trouble or injuries for them to go, we need we need to turn to you. We need to try something. We need to mix it up because, you know, without playing a game for essentially two months, um, even, if, even for the best athletes in the world, that's... You, and the highest intensity of basketball you, you're ever going to play, it's a pretty tall order to ask to come in and, and give meaningful minutes. So I, I doubt you will see him this series. Okay. Um, yeah, from May 26, which was about five days ago, he was cleared for non-contact basketball activities. So yep. it's hard to get like up. That's the way I like to play my basketball too, but sadly it's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Um, all right, game one. Nick, how do you see it oh. panning out and any flutters that you are having? I just put a little $10 into one on um on before before we had a little catch up today. So Denver to win at a dollar twenty-five, a dollar twenty-six, I think, for game one. I'm gonna go unders. So what do you think the have you looked at the over unders yet? It's uh, two twenty two twenty, maybe? Two eighteen point five. Yeah. I just think the game one, no matter how seasoned the teams are, everyone's sphincters tighten up a little bit more than than usual. So I'm going to go unders for that, which is that's a dollar ninety odd. The other one, it's a sneaky little good one. Kyle Lowry averages 0. 0.7 of a 0. 0.7 blocks a game in the NBA playoffs. He will play a lot of minutes, as I mentioned before. He he's a little niggling um, bloke. At two dollars eighty, I'm throwing him in the multi, and then the other one who I'm going to be Getting around for as I put our note, Sammy, get around him. Michael Porter Jr. I think at the home games, I th- he is one that you can't put all your attention on. Well, you're going to put most of your attention on Murray and Jokic. He is not shy at all. He thinks he's the best player on the team still. And he knows he's like you should know by now. He's not, but he has the confidence of a, a young Sam at 18 walking into Twister. He's um, <laughs> he's yeah, he's bored a gate. So that. All that little multi there uh, gets up to ten bucks, so that's my uh, one of the multis that I'll be playing. I might take them all um, one out as well. But my biggest thing um, is role players on home courts is the thing I like to look out for, and, and typically get three out of four legs in most of the multis with with that. So as in three legs of the individual multi. Um, so Caleb Martin's been a good one to follow um, over fifteen points. He you know he was. You might be back into like a dollar seventy now or something, or a dollar thirty, but um, he's been a good one of late. So if he has a couple of average games in Denver, look to hit him back, hit him back up when they get to home. What about you, Sammy? What do you got in your um game one and same game multi? Um, I've just um, you mentioned the unders for that game. 
if you follow the stats that I do and read out, home team Denver, 107.7. Miami scored 99.8 on average. That's well under 218. Mm. So you're getting um, the sphincter. You got to yeah. remember the sphincter, boys and girls. Um, so I'm definitely going to play the unders once yep. we get off this podcast and um, have a few more little ones. But mine's going to be a 10 legger. I'm going to go fat. Um, you've got on this. So get your pens and pencils ready and I'll go through it slowly. So 10 legs, nuggets to win. I'm going to go bam to score 20 plus and six rebounds. And I'll go through each one and then I'll explain why. Murray, 20 points plus and four assists. Porter Jr., 15 points plus and six rebounds plus. And then Jimmy Buckets Butler, six plus rebounds and four assists and one steal. Now, all these stats that I've, all these players and their stats, they have gone above in playoffs this year. In, during the playoff series. On average? Um, or... On average. Does Bam Bam's have to be over 20 points a game? 20.7. Unless I'm looking at 2021. Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> but, yeah, he averaging 20.7. I'll, I'll, I'll fact check you while you're, yep. while you're... And, yeah, all these stats are playoff average. So at $23.50, you don't have to have a lot on. Um, yeah, 10 legger, bam, 20 points plus six rebounds plus Murray, 20 points plus four plus assists, Porter Jr., 15 points plus Porter Jr., six rebounds plus Butler, six plus rebounds, four assists plus and one plus steal at $23.50. Can I slightly burst your bubble? Yes, it's 19.8. No, 16.8. Really? You might have read it upside down. You got your nines and your sixes the wrong way around. Okay. You probably, um, probably have 40 now. <laughs> I'm going to look from where I got my stat from, but we'll keep going. Um, the series, obviously. I only know that. I'm sorry. I only know that because that's burnt me a lot because I, I do like punching on Bam, but he has a few has had a few weak offensive games. So apologies to cut you off. No, you're all, all good. Um. My Emmy Heat. We'll continue. Uh, series. Right. Let's Denver. go. He's at 20.4 on his average, but then if you go into the playoffs, he's averaging 16.9. I'm going to check. Give me um, a bit. Um, series. Denver, 128. Miami Heat, $4. How do you see the series, Nick? Um, I'm following the money and putting putting everything on Denver. <laughs> at a dollar dollar twenty, I think they're in a dollar twenty six now. Um, for yeah, you probably got the theme of the podcast. However long we've been chatting for, but they they win it. Um, I think it might go more than I don't think it'll be a sweep. I think it'll be a five game. I think it'll be a gentleman sweep. Um, but again, there's still still joy to be had with the punting side of things. I've been looking for those um. Those role players in home games, whether it's points, rebounds, and assists, or fact checking your scoring for players. What do you want to do, Sammy? I know where I've got it from. It's points for the regular season. Yep. 20.4. Yep. Yep. Goodbye, me. Yep. Good stats, but he'll get 20. I'm confident. <laughs> um, Cancel it. Yeah. For me, this series, I see Gordon or Porter Jr. I think mainly Porter Jr. will play on buckets. I think he'll put a tighter lockdown than Dan Andrews did in the Victorian lockdown. Okay, that's an interesting call. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I see Denver winning 4-zip, 4-1. Ooh, yep. Yep. Do And the thing is, do Miami have anyone that can stop Jamal Murray? Maybe Kyle Lowry. But I just think he's going to be too quick for him. Yeah. Yep. Especially if they give him space from that halfway to the three point line, if they really give him room, he's just going to be like a rocket to the wards of the rim. Yep. And they might, Denver love a pick and roll, and Miami like throwing zone, a zone, the old fashioned zone defense at him. Um, I think Jokic will just pull that apart. Um, yep. I just think they're too, 
you know, again, they've been through battles together. They're a pretty consistent team. They're really well coached. Um, mm. Yeah, I just think that 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 side of it, the continuity, home court advantage, the altitude. Um, yeah, I think it's it's Denver at four one. I think I think Miami will sneak one because it just like that's me not counting them out because they've, they've shown in the last two months of how resilient they are. But I think it's yeah, I think like everyone, I've, I've underestimated them. But I think now's the time um, they might have met their met their match. I think if they can pinch one, it's game one maybe because they've got the yeah. momentum and yeah. Denver are well rested. Probably they've had two weeks off close to. Yeah. Um, and only playing 15 games where Miami's played 20. But I just think Denver for zip five at $5.50 is a bet to have. Yeah. Um, a previous mention, have a look at whoever you bet with. Um, have a look because there's going to be a lot of same game multi promos of how many legs and how many you miss. So do shop around. I know Tab have a big, uh, the biggest markets for the NBA. So, yep. but Nothing I good don't thing know. With the tab. They do the a thing within, if you go into the actual game uh, within the tab, so they've got 450 markets mm. on the game, which is incredible. They normally have a, a um, section, can't find it at the moment, called What Are the Odds? Yes. Where they put like two players together for whether it's points, rebounds, or all they might put four players, like the two best players of each team. That's an interesting one just to keep an eye on because there is some like most of the pricing there starts at like a dollar ninety or something. So the, there are at times some good um, candidates there. So I will flick that on the group messages when I see one I really really like um, in the whispers chat as we progress through the series. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, definitely fish around whoever you use. Have a look who's got the best ones and definitely take advantage of it. I think. Um, yeah, I don't know who's got the best ones yet, so I'll wait till the night before before um, launching into the same game multis. Uh, MVP, this is the uh, what everyone loves to bet in. Oh, I do. Uh, Jokic, a dollar thirty. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I was just thinking last year because that was one we we both got last year, which wasn't it was an obvious one with Steph Curry. It was like two dollars ten or two twenty. Yeah. Yep. The series, whereas so the best player in the series, and then you've got. This see this series a dollar thirty like that's yeah, and that's what I thought we'd get for Jokey is a two dollars you know to advertise punters to have a crack here because yeah. I didn't think it was that one a one horse race here. Yeah, so again, if I had to put my life on it, I would back him like obviously. So it's I just thought yeah I thought that supply some juicier odds because then that gets people sucked into betting on other things like. You know that the other four hundred fifty markets they've got because it, yeah it's not going to fruit bear too much fruit. But I do mind. I don't mind your other little mention that you other little player you mentioned as a as a smart little saver. I wouldn't wouldn't invest too much. But Jamal Murray, you you mentioned him on the chat the other night as well about yeah. Some of oh, the I think this is a bet. I think you can have a bet, not a big one, but I, I I'm not saying joking doesn't win the MVP, but he's now a dollar twenty five. That's oh, just wow. silly. Yeah. Um you just anything can happen. It's yeah. Um Jimmy Butler's five dollars, Jamal Murray eleven dollars, and then you can have thirty six dollars bam, uh Caleb Martin sixty ones and then a hundred dollar like Porter Jr. 150 ones, Aaron Gordon 326s. Now if they like I said with Wiggins if yeah. they play that lockdown yeah. role and win four zip, yep. and Jimmy has under twenty points each game, you never know. But the old theory comes back: Jokic didn't win MVP, so they'll be looking to give him some sort of reward here, yeah, for not giving him that three in a row. Um, but yeah, I just think Jamal Murray eleven, well twelve dollars now eleven, a market mover at Whispers Bet. Um, yeah. I just think if they'll give him a lot of room from the halfway to the three line and he will just keep driving and driving until he loses his license. I know it's a bad joke, but um, I just think he's going to have a lot of, I've had West this, this stress. Um, I think he's going to have a lot more ball and he's going to try and dominate on his own hands mm-hmm. and he knows it. And that's why I just think eleven. I couldn't believe it. I would have. I, I I'd have Murray marked seven dollars at least. Yeah. Yep. And joking near the two dollar mark. 
to what was Wiggins was what 18 last last finals from memory 18 or 21s or something oh I reckon he was a lot more yeah okay yeah I reckon he was in the 30s to 50s yep um, the thing is with players like that though the the likelihood like the Iguodala's of like that's probably the last time I can remember when it's happened with, with someone who's not the the top um player in the team winning that award yep um it is it's just so rare so and I think to be honest I think Porter Jr has got more of a chance than Gordon I think I just I'm very optimistic with his confidence <laughs> I'm confident yeah. in his confidence um but I, I think he'll have one game where he is the best player for Denver, but I, I can't see him having four. Okay. Um, all right. So who are you landing with, Nick? Uh Denver in five. Uh, Denver in five. Denver in five and MVP? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go soft. Jokic. But you can probably surely there'll be a bookie that will let you multi those two on. I know there's a lot of them that don't. Yeah, no, so, I couldn't have tried to do that today. Um, not the um not the exacter, not the um five uh, four one result into the MVP, but the championship into the MVP and they wouldn't let you do it. So at tab. Okay. All right. Um that's a bit weird. Normally they're the ones that do, but that's okay. Yeah, I'll go four zip, Jamal Murray, um, and a scuffle in those four games. Scuffle, yes. Yes, I think we'll see an ejection. Bring back the biff. Has there been any punch ons in the uh, rugby yet? Or uh, there's been a couple at the corner of my eye. Yeah, there's been a few little um, jumper punches. Mm-hmm. But um, that's the, any last words, Nick? No, we'll um, not get back. Um, <laughs> no, I'll put um, I'll share any little bets or anything that I see in the, in the whispers group chat. Um, that yeah. If you want to pick the eyes out of a couple of multis that I put up, please feel free. Um, and royalties to nickreed.com.au. <laughs> yeah, now definitely there'll be there was a bit of chat. I was hoping it would die, wouldn't come up this early because mm-hmm. I was writing my notes and someone asked me, is Jamal Murray value for MVP? And I had yeah. to screenshot my notes. I wanted to save it for the podcast, but cleared it uh, early. That's why what's come into 11s from 12s. <laughs> yeah, my whopping, yeah. Um, but no, thank you for joining us, mate. It's been a pleasure all a pleasure. season. Um, I'm hoping next season we can do a few more, yep, like once a month. Um, to yeah, get into it because I enjoy talking about it. Me too. All, all right, right. yes, yeah, have yourself a lovely evening. Yes, yeah, same to you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Please, um, Whispers Racing Podcast is where you'll find everything. We drop our horse racing every Thursday night, uh, and Follow me on TikTok because I put a lot of uh, info out on that. If you want to know where that is, come DM me and I'll um, put you straight through to TikTok because, yeah, I put a lot of content on there if I'm not blocked by the end of the week. Have you been blocked yet? Uh, I'm on my final warning. What's the, is it a consistent issue you've got? Yeah, it's words that you use. Okay. Like betting. Ah. Okay, Jesus! If you have a look at my TikTok feed and what pops up, you know, yeah, I think yeah. betting is the, the most evil thing they've got on on um. Oh, the- don't get me started. Um, no. but yeah, thank you all for watching, listening wherever you watch or listen. Thank you again, and um, yeah, we'll see you if it goes to game seven. We might preview game seven before it goes. If it goes to game seven, we are definitely doing a um a five minute fast money round. Yeah, definitely. All right, sure. mate. Thank you. Thank have you all. Night, mate.